Hi there, this is Vadim from Online Training for Everyone. In this video, we'll explore most common numerical reasoning assessment test questions. Let's go ahead and get started. You're presented with three shapes. Each shape has five magical squares with numbers inside. First shape has number 5 in the middle and numbers 5, 3, 4, and 7 on the outside. Second shape has numbers 3, 4, 5, and 8 on the outside and number 2 in the middle. And then the third shape has numbers 6, 7, 1, and 5 on the outside and missing number in the middle, which you need to calculate and select your answer out of four possible choices. Choice A, 1, choice B, 2, choice C, 3, and choice D, 4. Take a moment to review the question and think it through, just like you would on a real test. Make sure you choose your answer before time's up. Then I'll be here to go over the solution with you. Let's get started. Time's up. Do you have your answer ready? I hope so, because the pattern here is really simple. Let's take a close look at the first shape. 7 plus 5 equals 12, and 4 plus 3 equals 7. 12 minus 7 equals 5. In fact, this is how number in the middle was calculated. And the pattern here, as you might have guessed, that the difference between the sum of top and bottom numbers calculates the middle number. Let's verify our hypothesis with the second shape. 8 plus 3 in parentheses minus 5 plus 4 in parentheses equals 2. And that's exactly the number in the middle in the second shape. And I think you know what time it is now. It's the magic time to calculate the missing number. 5 plus 6 in parentheses minus 1 plus 7 in parentheses equals 11 minus 8 and equals 3. So the correct answer here is choice C, 3. Are you excited for more? Especially now when you know how to solve these types of challenges. Try this question to see how you would do. You're presented with three shapes. Each shape has five squares with numbers inside. First shape has numbers 8, 5, 4, 4, and then number 5 in the middle. Second shape has numbers 9, 3, 5, 5, and then number 2 in the middle. And then the third shape has numbers 7, 6, 7, and 5, and then missing number in the middle, which you need to calculate and select your answer out of four possible choices. Choice A, 1. Choice B, 2. Choice C, 3. And choice D, 4. Once you've calculated your answer, share it in comments and I'll give you my feedback. Have fun with this intriguing challenge. <sighs> Not sure about you, but to me this question feels like running a marathon. The first few miles are the hardest, but with each step you build the stamina to keep going. Make sure you stay strong and you will cross the finish line. You need to find the percentage of the number. What is the 2% of 300? What is the 40% of 90? What is 25% of 160 and 50% of 48? Your choices for the answer are choices A, B, C, and D. Make sure you carefully review the question just like you would in a real test. And lock in your answer before time runs out. Once you're done, I'll join you on the other side and we'll go over the solution together. Remember, we're running the marathon. Ready? Set. Go. Time's up. Do you have your answer ready? Remember, we need to stay strong so you can cross the finish line. And uh, did I forget to mention that we're doing it without the calculator? Well, let me equip you with all the tools necessary for you to succeed. We'll solve each problem one by one, starting with the simplest one. What is 50% of 48? Wouldn't it be half of 48? And what is half of 48? It's 48 divided by 2, which could be calculated in your mind and would equal 24. The second simplest one is 20% of 160. Always remember that 25% is nothing else than the quarter of a number. And what is quarter of 160? It's as simple as 160 divided by 4. And the result is 40. Let's move on to the next one. What is 40% of 90? 
To solve this problem, we need to drop 0 from both numbers. 40 multiplied by 90 after dropping the zeros would be 4 multiplied by 9 and would be equal 36. And then the last one is 2% of 300. We solve it exactly the same way as the previous one. We need to drop two zeros and multiply the numbers. 2 doesn't have any zeros, but 300 has two zeros. So 2 multiplied by 300 would be converted to 2 multiplied by 3 and would equal 6. Now let's recap. 2% of 300 is 6. 40% of 90 is 36. 25% of 160 is 40. And 50% of 48 is 24. And the correct answer here is choice D. 6, 36, 40, and 24. But wait, are you ready for more? Especially now when you know how to solve these types of challenges. Try this question to see how you would do. You need to find the percentage of the number. What is 2% of 200? What is 30% of 60? What is 25% of 100? And what is 50% of 36? Make sure to calculate your answer and select it from choices A, B, C, and D. Post it in comments so I'll give you my feedback. Good luck with this intriguing challenge. You need to determine which four numbers average 25, but you only presented with three numbers. The numbers are 12, 48, 25, and then comes the missing number, which you need to calculate and select out of four possible choices. Choice A, 15, choice B, 20, choice C, 35, and last but not least, choose D, 40. Here's the caveat though, can't use the calculator. Well, let me give you a little bit of time to solve this challenge and let's reconnect on the other side to compare the answers. Time's up. Are you ready to show your answer? And to solve it, we need to remember how to calculate the average. Average is the sum of all the numbers divided by the number of elements. In our case, we can create the formula 25 equals and then on the top 12 plus 48 plus 25 plus x as a missing number divided by 4. Once we simplify, 25 would be equal in parentheses 85 plus x divided by 4 which means 100 would be equal 85 plus x and x can be calculated as 100 minus 85 and would be equal 15. And let's make sure we walk the talk and don't repeat typical mistakes. Let's verify our answer. 12 plus 48 plus 25 plus 15 equals 100. 100 divided by 4 equals 25. It looks like our calculations are correct and the correct choice here is choice A, 15. Your mission in this adventure is to find a special symbol to put between 3 and 7. This magical symbol should make a number that is more than 3 but less than 7. Sounds tricky, right? I can tell you this, I have full confidence that you can solve this challenge by giving yourself enough time to think about it. Are you ready? I'm going to continue this adventure and delve into intricacies of this amazing question. If you are still thinking about the answer, I'm gonna give you a hint. Do not limit yourself to just the basic math signs and think out of the box. Want additional hint? Take a look at the choices presented here. Choice A plus sign, choice B minus sign, choice C multiplication sign, and then choice D question mark. Does this ring a bell? That there is no sign here that actually solved this challenge. That's because these signs are too basic for this puzzle party. Here comes the hero, the dot sign. Sneaky and clever, it slides between 3 and 7, turning them into the cool team of 3.7. All we need to do now is to verify the answer. 3.7 is greater than 3 and 3.7 is less than 7. So the correct answer here is dot sign and the answer is 3.7. Without a doubt, to solve this question, we need to embrace the famous quote from Napoleon Hill. Strength and growth come only through continuous effort and struggle. So embrace the challenges presented by this question as opportunities for your personal and professional growth, knowing that perseverance is the pathway to success. 
you are presented with the octagon. Octagon has seven numbers inside, and the eighth number is missing. Starting from the eight o'clock, the numbers are 51, 93, 72, 85, 16, 36, 25, and then comes the missing number, which you need to calculate and select out of four possible choices. Choice A, 9. Choice B, 39. Choice C, 49. And last but not least, choice D, 98. I know you can do it. Together, we'll navigate through these challenges and emerge stronger on the other side. Time's up. Are you ready to show your answer? And as you might have guessed, the pattern here is very simple. Starting at 8 o'clock, numbers on the opposite side of the octagon are subtractions of the digits squared from the opposite side. Let's look at the example. At 8 o'clock, we see the number 51. At 2 o'clock, we see the number 16. 5 minus 1 squared equals 16. Let's confirm our logic with other numbers. 9 minus 3 squared equals 36. 7 minus 2 squared equals 25. So the missing number is calculated as 8 minus 5 squared and equals 9. So the correct answer here is choice A, 9. <laughs> Let's face it, navigating this question is like convincing a cat to take a bath. A tricky endeavor, but once you soak in the solution, it's a clean success. This assessment might be measuring our ability to handle slippery math expressions. In fact, you are presented with three of those expressions. The first one is 23 multiplied by 23 equals 25. The second one is 25 multiplied by 25 equals 49. And the third one is where you need to find the missing number. The expression is 27 by 27, and the result of it you need to select out of four possible choices. Choice A, 64. Choice B, 72. Choice C, 76. And last but not least, choice D, 81. Feeling a bit stuck? Well, guess what? You're not alone. I feel exactly the same way. But I'm the firm believer that you've got this. Whether you're a seasoned problem solver or just starting out, I know you can do it. Take a deep breath, approach it with creativity, and let's navigate through this challenge together. Your breakthrough is just around the corner. Are you ready with your solution? Well, or at least excited about this mental workout. Did I warn you that this expression is slippery? In the typical world, 23 multiplied by 23 equals 529. But to solve this problem, we need to think out of the box. And instead of using traditional math, you need to sum up the digits and multiply the result of the sum operation. Let's look at the example. For example, 23 by 23 would be 2 plus 3 in parentheses multiplied by 2 plus 3 would be 5 multiplied by 5 and the result of this would be 25. The second expression would be 2 plus 5 in parentheses multiplied by 2 plus 5 in parentheses would be equal 7 by 7 would be equal 49. So the missing number could be calculated as 2 plus 7 multiplied by 2 plus 7 which would be equal 9 multiplied by 9 or 9 squared and would be equal to 81. So the correct answer here is choice D, 81. <laughs> if developing sharper analytical skills is on your agenda, which I'm pretty sure it is, this question could challenge you to take your skills to the next level. You're presented with three cool looking shapes. Each shape has two circles and triangle and also has four numbers inside. First shape has numbers 14, 42, 35 and then number 37 in the middle. Second shape has numbers 15, 30 and 27 and then number 23 in the middle. Third shape has number 35 in the middle and then numbers 16, 48 and then comes the missing number which you need to calculate and select out of four possible choices. Choice A, 41. Choice B, 42. Choice C, 43. And last but not least, choice D, 45.
time's up. Are you ready to show your answer? The pattern here is that the calculations start in the upper left corner and digits from the middle number are used individually to complete the calculations. First digit is used for multiplication and second digit is used for subtraction. Let's look at the sample calculations so it makes sense. We start with the number 14 in the upper left corner. 14 multiplied by 3, which is the first digit of 37, equals 42. And then 42 minus 7 equals 35. Let's complete the calculations for the second shape to confirm the pattern. 15 multiplied by 2 equals 30, and 30 minus 3 equals 27. Now is the time to calculate the missing number. 16 multiplied by 3 equals 48, and 48 minus 5 equals 43. So the correct answer here is choice C, 43. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate you for helping us to become one of the largest YouTube channels to help people become smarter, increase your IQ, and to pass any test. If the content of this video was helpful, please make sure to click the like button to help YouTube algorithm promote this video and help other people to find it faster. Giving us a like is also a way for you to tell us that you need more content like this, and when you tell us, we will deliver it for you in the future. For links to free and premium resources, please check the description and comments of this video. You can also go directly to our website, howtoanalyzedata.net, to download the materials related to this topic. I really appreciate your endorsement, support, and patronage of this channel. And thank you for considering to become a member and considering to subscribe. Please leave feedback, suggestions, or corrections in comments. And all the best on your journey. I'll see you in my next video.